Hello, I'm Ethan Woodworth. I am back with another episode of the Stoic Sapping Podcast. This is going to be episode six, and we're going to title it Social Media Toxicity. The first thing I want to say before jumping in is how nervous and how tough some of these episodes are. This is the first time I've ever jumped in front of a camera, like just me. And I got to tell you, this is the weirdest thing ever. I've done, this is like my sixth take now. I've done like two to three minutes of my intro and then I've just cut it short because I'm like, damn it, that's that's bad. That's not good enough. I'm going to look weird. I'm talking weird. I'm not saying the right things. And this take, I just told myself, this is the last, this is the last fucking time I'm doing that. This take is going to be the one that works out. I'm sick of trying to be a perfectionist. I'm sick of it trying to be perfect. I'm going to take awkward pauses. I'm going to say weird things. Uh, I don't care because this is going to be a raw, somewhat uncut take. And this one's going to work because I'm sick of just trying to make it perfect. (laughs) So yeah, social media toxicity. And um, first thing I want to jump in is maybe relating it back to that. Maybe my perfectionist qualities come from social media and me watching YouTube videos and seeing all their uh, fancy editing and whatnot and how professional they look. And it makes me think, yeah, I need to be up to that standard. I need to be as smooth and clean as Joe Rogan. But this is a student podcast. This is my sixth episode. So I just need to, I think, humble myself a little bit, realize it'll be choppy, realize it'll be bad, and uh, go through with it. So I thank you guys for tuning in. Um, yeah, social media toxicity. I'll jump in by saying why I kind of wanted to hit this podcast topic, especially solo. So recently, I'd say the last year, I've really had um, perspective changing stuff within my view on social media. And I've more or less kind of gotten away from it and uh, taken a bird's eye look at social media and just said like, wow, like th- this is really an issue within my generation and all generations around me, honestly. And I want to explain how I've somewhat navigated my social social media problems and issues and how I've worked through them, progressed, and how it's helped me to become a more productive person. I would say 2021 has been the most efficient year of my life. And that may contribute to some of these practical techniques that I have implemented within this year. So I want to share those. And I think these can be implemented in anybody's life, especially my youngsters out there that are spending way too much damn, damn time on your phone. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. I also wanted to talk about how I've been so into time recently that it's been, I don't want to say bad or negating, but it's been somewhat inhibiting towards me when I'm sitting at home on a Sunday, for example, and it's been three hours where I haven't done anything. Let's just say I'm sitting on my couch with my dog and my family. And those, those are moments you should cherish. They are because they don't, they don't last forever like anything else. But then I'll start to get through my head. Like I'm being lazy. I need to do something. Um, this isn't who I am. So I started to think like of what, what I can do. I got to get productive. I got to go pick up a book right now. I got to go study some more uh, math or a different class right now. I have to work on this podcast right now. And it's just kind of an issue that I'm facing with right now because I just want to be productive. And I'm obsessed with that grind and just getting things done. And that, because that's what brings me joy. But I shouldn't always think like that because that is also a... uh, negative cycle to get wrapped up in where you're just constantly, constantly working. You can't take a step back because all you're thinking about is getting that next project done is impressing somebody else with your work and expertise and knowledge. So that's kind of what I'm working on right now. But I think that's because I've somewhat moved beyond the first step, which is actually getting productive and being not productive of just like sitting on your phone withering away your life on stupid social media apps so i first just want to talk with a practical solution which is being mindful of 
what you're doing on your phone, period. So I realized like how much I just pick up my phone and go on it for the stupidest, no good reasons. I would just pick it up, check it, um, then find something to do. Like there's nothing going on. No one's texting me, but I'm just trying to start something. I'm trying to see who's, who's doing what, who's where, um, what I'm missing out on. And after kind of taking a step back, you realize you're not missing anything. Nothing that you are going to not check your phone on for three to four hours is going to be monumental. Nothing's going to pop up more than likely. There's not going to be a catastrophic event, uh, an asteroid coming, aliens aren't going to come save the day. None of that's going to happen when you're not on your phone. And once you kind of realize that and then pick apart your own small details of how you're using social media and you'll see just these, these patterns of you'll go here, you'll do this, you'll click that. And you're just like, why, why, why? Once you take the step back and I'd say that's the, the first part of kind of stopping this cycle is just being mindful, even knowing that what you're doing is it's not right and it's not productive. That That's the first step that I took. The second one was then taking an action plan. And I'm like, okay, I'm spending, let's say, let's say four hours a day on my phone. I'm spending four hours, four hours. <laughs> so let's get, let's get that number down. So I'll go to the screen time app. I'll see, okay, uh, 60% of my phone time is being used for Snapchat. And okay, let's get that number down by 10 minutes next week. So that's the goal. 10 minutes next week. I'm still Snapchatting, blah, blah, blah. What's good? All of that. Next week comes around. Okay, drop 10 minutes. What are we going to do? The next week after that, we're going to set another goal. We're going to move towards that. So then you have these explicit goals that you're setting either in your head or better yet on paper and attack them. Go for them. And set them week by week, and you'll see this little downward trend just whoop, down, down. You're off your phone, and then that's where that's where I think the productivity lies is because when you're not doing all of this and all of this, you can pick up other things, and those things are what I think makes everybody's life a bit more better, and will give you better feeling, better sleep at night better everything period because you're going to be at ease with with what you're doing during the day so that would that'd be my first thing is just be mindful of where you're at then make the explicit goals and work towards them and that that's your first step now moving on to a more broad topic so you you've simplified that um social media you've kind of ceased it you've uh been mindful set goals and seen them through. So you're off of it. You're, you're waning off. You're, you're not doing um, social media near as much. And it's really, that was a short segment, but it's kind of that simple. You know, I'm not going to sit here for hours talking about, you know, 20 techniques to get off your phone. No, no, no. It's literally just like, be mindful, set goals, achieve the goals. You'll be off your phone. But then people will say, okay, if you're not on your phone, what the hell else is there to do? You know, like this, this life's a boring life. There's nothing else to do besides the screen. You know, this is way better than anything else you can suggest to me because this is fun. You know, I get to see booty. I get to see girls. I get to see uh, my buddies all on this app. So uh, that's where I would say get into a routine and stick to it. Set your days out. So you're filling all those gaps that you just limited from your phone. So that starts the night before you set your goals. Once again, I would suggest setting them on a paper. So, you know, you can go back to the paper the day after and know, okay, I did this goal. I did this goal. I did this goal. Set them out. And then you have a full day ahead of you of pure productivity. So there's no reason to even go back to your phone. For me, this involves waking up in the morning for the gym first thing second is going to school not just going to school but being productive in class i'm not going to sit there on my phone 
and scroll. I want to do something else, maybe do, do homework and uh, classes that don't matter for other classes. I'm not just going to sit there, scroll, 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 waste 40 minutes of my time out the window. No, no, no. We're going to spend that 40 minutes doing homework, reading books, talking to people. It's not a huge one. I would rather just talk to other people, talk to students than to sit on my phone with my head down, just looking through social media. You can actually build connections. And that's where once again, you could even use um, or try out some new like social techniques. You know, if if you're lacking, um, not lacking, but let's say you just want to start a new habit of complimenting people. Then you can start it then. You can get off your phone. You can look somebody in the eye and give them a compliment. I swear to God, you'll feel really good. You'll feel really good. <laughs> so then after you know school, a full day of actually doing stuff, um, then that's when your night, my night is spent, I go, I study, and then I go to jujitsu after studying and eating dinner. Then when I come back, that's when I have that night or at night, that's when I can do whatever I want. And that's the time that I've kind of set aside where maybe I want to get on my phone and I want to check the social medias. So I'll go on the interwebs, I'll check my social medias, but I just put out the whole entire day before or the whole entire whatever, 12 hours beforehand. So I've kind of earned that time on my phone. And you, you, other people may not see it like that. They may see it like, you know, I just did two hours of hard work in school. Therefore, I earned an hour on my phone. And that's good. Like even thinking like that, even thinking in those terms of you earning those times on your, those, that time on your phone, that steps in the right direction. Is that sort of competitive self-improvement drive? That's what's going to push you further and further. So, Because then that, that same person in a month, he's going to be saying, okay, I just put out five hours of time in, in the real world doing shit. I get 30 minutes on my phone. Then they're going to say, okay, I did seven hours of hard, hard work. I get 10 minutes on my phone. And I am for sure not there yet, but I feel like I'm on that upswing of finding that uh, peak productivity uh, of equaling that uh, free time. And I'm trying to find that balance day after day. And that's kind of where I'm at right now is I'm, I'm lost because I'm so, not lost, but uh, disoriented because I'm so focused on productivity, productivity, be efficient with your time. That it's not counterbalancing, you know, that free time where I actually do sit down and do be mindful of my friends and my family around me and whatnot. So that's kind of what I'm working on. And that's what I would tell you guys to do is just find that balance between all things in your life. Another technique to simplify your life that kind of revolves around social media is not giving people not giving time to people that really aren't challenging you or improving you period Dude, this one's a tough one to talk about because i'm just so young and i really haven't even experienced this that much i have a feeling i'll experience it a lot more when i go off to college post-college um and then whenever i get a job i'm really gonna have to not have to but it's just gonna kind of happen um, organically is I'll just find the people that really do matter around me and make my, my group will just kind of naturally get smaller. I see this with 40, 50 year olds, all older people is they just have a smaller group naturally. And I think that's just kind of what happens when you mature and you go off on your separate way, you get your own kind of niche things you love to do. You know, Sally loves to paint. I love to swim yeah, see you, Sally. And I just want to say that, that that'll happen. And prepare for those moments where you're probably going to lose a friend. You're probably going to move away from people that you used to call close buddies. And that's just life. That's just maturity. And I would say at the core, it's just leading to more productivity. Because once you have those people that are out of your life, 
that are taking up so much time and energy that really you don't even see the same vision. You don't really see the same goals. That that's all the better for you in the end because you're just going to be working on your own life instead of, you know, the, this relationship that really isn't getting anywhere. So yeah, I don't want to sound calloused like I've been there, done that. I've, uh, you know, got my circle super, super small, just the closest knit of guys ever, or girls. But, you know, it kind of has naturally gotten to the point where, yeah, I just want to hang with people that I feel, I feel like I'm having fun around. I feel like we're just vibing. Um, we, we enjoy the same things. We like to talk about, um, you know, subjects that I like to talk about. And uh, we're learning, we're challenging each other. Those are the type of relationships that I I love. And that's kind of what's been happening to me over the past year and two years in high school. Is I've really just cultivated, you know, strong relationships because of just simple maturity. And I, I would just say that's, simp- that's a part of simplifying your life. And that'll happen naturally. But you can even take your own little steps and maybe if they're, you're hanging out with people that you don't like and you don't like the way that they talk to you, they don't like the way you, you don't like the stuff you do with them, move on. Go, go to a new place, go to a new area, pick up a new hobby, meet people there. You know, you don't need to stay around these same people that are just holding you back. So t- take initiative and be mindful. Know who's around you, know who you're spending your time with because that just reflects what what you're doing, what you're doing in your life. So if you don't like the people you're hanging out with, you probably don't like the person you are right now. So I just take initiative, be mindful, and move on. I just want to jump into, I guess, why this matters. These these things I've just talked about, the uh, routine, the giving time to the people that you actually enjoy, you know, the practical techniques to get off your phone. All of these things, I would say, are going to give you the most beneficial, positive life you can live. These aren't like the only things you can do, but they're really, really influential for people younger as well. Because I think they're some of the most practical things that people can do. Especially teens with with all the phones and uh, maybe some negative people around them. These are really big topics that you can take and, and transform your life with. I would say that that just matters because it's your life. And if, if you want to live the most productive, um, highest aiming life possible, you just got to do these types of things. They, they may not be fun in the moment. They may, they may be tough on you if, you. if you had to get rid of the friends you've been around forever or, you know, you got to develop... Um, new routines that cut out all this leisure time and comfortability that you're close with, it's going to be tough. But then you, you'll look back in five, 10 years and you'll say, wow, I, I can't imagine where I'd be if I kept that same comfortability, that same just living within the the uh, comforts of my mind and um, short-term gratification given to the scrolling and all of that, just how much time I would have lost. But Obviously, you didn't because you switched your ways. You you worked towards goals. You did something a lot better and um, above yourself. You put you put your your time and effort towards something that actually matters and that you remember. And the anything is is really attainable when you put it in this perspective. And you free up all this time, and you free up a whole this productivity. Because you can put your your energy to anything you desire and you can get it done. I recently have just figured this out with various goals I've set throughout 2021. And they've all kind of been just coming to fruition the last quarter of the year. And it's so satisfying to see because I set the goal. I made it explicit. I took all the steps, uh, no matter how boring and... uh, mundane they felt at the time but it's what's got me to the point where like i'm satisfied with this year i'm happy with with how things went and uh it makes you just want to keep on going and keep on moving forward and 
maybe that's kind of why I'm I'm in this spot right now where I'm saying to myself, I gotta get productive because I'm obsessed with that feeling after you get you get it done, you get the big task that you've been working on for months on end, maybe years on end, done. And it's just, oh man, it's exhilarating. You just want to go back to that spot. You want to go back to the grind. So that's what gets you to, you know, wake up in the morning every single day and put out until 9 p.m. at night. And I'm just thankful for that sort of perspective that I've got at, at a young age. And that's what I wish to share with all of you guys is, you can achieve anything you want and these sort of techniques this sort of practicability i don't know that, i don't know if that's a word practicability but yeah i these things are what i think is going to bring you a great life and i i don't want to sit here and act like i'm the uh pinnacle of productivity and getting things done because i'm not i'm seriously not you know before this uh i spent way too much time planning this and thinking what the hell am I going to say on my next podcast freaking out I should have just sat in front of this camera the first time and just shot it because this is awesome just kind of the rawness of of me in front of the camera and how I really feel and just kind of pinpointing my own emotions and how I've got to this point where I am today so yeah though the all those things I outlined uh, I talked about um, they they may seem simplistic and you've everybody's probably heard them before, but it's just kind of a warning call. You know, you you clicked on this video probably, and you maybe thought, um, "What? Well, I'm not gonna learn anything new. Like this is just gonna be the same regurgitated shit I've heard a thousand times again." But that's why you hear it a thousand times over again because it is the right thing to do. That's why you hear don't steal, don't lie. You hear it over and over again when you're four years old. Why? Because it's the right thing to do. And that's what creates a person that that can move throughout life and can be fulfilled because they're they're taking the right steps, they're taking the right actions. So that's why this and all the other videos you're watching on YouTube that are about self-improvement or whatnot, Listen to them and when you're walking to class, when you're going to bed, think about them. Implement the things people are talking about because it will it will improve your life. It will improve productivity and I just want to see other people succeed. So there's my one goal. Just listen, implement, listen, implement, listen, implement. I know this may be a shorter episode, but that's what I wanted to get out. Um, before I leave here, I do want to share uh, a book and a movie. I may actually share a story as well since this is running short. I probably just talk. I do talk a bit too quick sometimes, and it's <laughs> probably why I flew, flew through some of my points. So one book before I head out is I want to talk about um, Thinking Fast and Slow. I don't know how to say the guy's last name. I think it's Daniel uh, Kahneman, maybe. Um, but it's kind of another book that it, it is a book that just makes you think, and it's about the human mind and just how um, what I want to say how limited. How limited the human mind really is and how biased and how stupid you sometimes think and you just you're you're quick to assume things you're quick to uh, predict just faulty ideas and this will just show you like there's so many studies in here about like people and um, that like their willingness to bet on certain outcomes and their um, like just patterns of thought, patterns of action. And it just kind of shows me, man, the the human race is pretty damn lazy. <laughs> and, uh, whenever I just pick this up and go to some of the sections and read it, it's like, wow, like people actually did this. People think this way. I think this way. And 
I guess it, every time I open it, it's just kind of a hit of humility because it's like, wow, you know, I got I got a lot of things to work on. I got to move past some of these uh, faulty, um, faulty things that I fall fall for, and I'm just you know quick to assume, quick to uh, discriminate against others or stuff like that. And this will just really open your mind, I guess, and you know m- make you think slow. That's what uh, it's kind of the point is using the um, the second part of your your brain that really slows down your thought process and um, gives you the time to think things through. One of its main points is long term gratification. So putting things off in the present so you can get them in the future. You can reap the benefits. Um, so that's why you would, if you were training for some big event, that's what that's what you're doing in the present. You know, you're sacrificing all this time to put in the training hours. So on game day or whatever, you put the hell out and you win. So that's kind of the main focus point is thinking slow, you know, um, being meticulous within your thought process and just kind of um, thinking wiser, smarter. So thinking fast, thinking slow, good book. I loved it. Suggest it for all of you guys. One movie I wanted to talk about was... There's a few uh, on this that I chose here. I'm going to choose Arrival. Arrival is a sci-fi flick, and it's one of my favorite movies ever. It's about a... Um, she's like some sort of language teacher. She knows languages really well and just how um, languages work and are written and spoken. And there's an alien species that comes to planet Earth. And it's kind of her job. Um, The military hires her out. It's it's her job to communicate with these aliens and figure out, you know, why why the hell do they show up? They're not being aggressive or anything, but they just kind of showed up and it's it's really weird. So she goes to the aliens and starts to communicate with them. And she begins to have all these insights about her own life and um people around her humanity as a whole and it's just really cool to see her um gain this new understanding just based off a of language and communicating with a different species and i i love sci-fi i love this movie just because the mis- messages of just um consciousness and um the human soul just really hit home so i suggest everybody Watch Arrival. It's kind of like uh, the themes I've been talking about with um, long-term gratification. You know, maybe getting off the social media, just doing the right things in life, taking the right steps. So, Arrival. I would suggest it. Uh, Denny Villeneuve is the director. I'm a big fan of his work. Um, I would suggest all of his work to every person around. So yeah, um, Arrival. Thinking fast and slow by Daniel Daniel Kahneman are my two suggestions, one book, one movie. I I do want to share one story before we leave here. I don't know why I just thought of this. I looked at one of my posters on my wall, which is Mr. Kobe Bean Bryant himself. And I was thinking of just basketball in general. And I thought back to, I think it was two years ago, I went to this Pacers uh, Celtics game. And uh, it was a prime time game, you know. Celtics have or had uh, Kyrie Irving. Um, Pacers were up there because we we had Victor Oladipo at the time, who was actually good. He could do something. Um, <laughs> he wasn't a complete shell of himself like he is now. But uh, my buddy Teddy Greenlee, I've had him on the podcast before. He invited me to the game with uh, a, one of our other buddies, Billy, and. Um, I remember we get there and I didn't really know we were sitting where where we were sitting and we pulled up and it turns out we were like courtside courtside and uh, Mr. Teddy Greenley got these tickets his parents probably finessed them somehow but it was they were great awesome ass tickets and um, the game was just incredible it was down to the wire and uh, Kyrie Irving ended up coming down the court with like eight seconds left or something, Oladipo picked him up at half court. Kyrie Irving takes a few dribbles. Um, it hits it hits like a big shot. And we're like, oh, we're stunned. You know, it's been an awesome game. It's over, blah, blah, blah. And then that's when Pacers got the ball back. 
and uh, Victor came down the court, Victor Aldipo, and everybody's like off their seats, of course, and he just takes a few dribbles, and he hits one right back in um, Kyrie's eyes at the top of the key, and um, I'll just never forget that moment, courtside, we were all jumping, going crazy, and it, it was just an amazing, awesome moment, and I, I love sporting events like that that are just unforgettable. Um, makes me want to go to another game like that, but obviously you can never predict when you're going to see a game like that. I think that may be one of the better games I'll, I'll see in my life, but I'll never forget that time. Um, best game I've ever seen live, and yeah, go Pacers, baby. <laughs> Thank you guys all for tuning into this episode of the Stoics Having Podcast. This is a shorter episode. Um, I guess I just kind of went through my points really quickly, but I, ho- I hope you can take something away from this. Um, like and comment below, subscribe, whatever. Um, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in, and I'll see you guys on the next one. This podcast will be coming out every 1st and 16th of each month. You can find me at the Stoic Sapping Podcast on YouTube and Spotify. I'll catch you guys on the next one.